Hello, friend. Welcome to 10 Bestest, where we sift through the noise so you don't have to. I'm Karen McFarlane Holman. And I'm Brian Hart. I'm going to be talking about an underground dystopian author. Today, I am going to be talking about a sustainable superhero. Let's get to it. My cool sheet. I am going to be talking about an author. This is Alice Sheldon, an author who wrote science fiction short stories in the late 60s and early 70s. Her work at that time was received as sharp and innovative, and she earned the Hugo and Nebula Awards and had a huge fan base. And she had admirers that included fellow science fiction writers like Philip K. Dick and Ursula Le Guin. Why haven't you heard of this name then? She primarily wrote under a male pseudonym, James Tiptree Jr. She also wrote under a female pseudonym, but her works written as Tiptree were far more successful. For example, within a year of publishing her first short stories as Tiptree, one of them, The Last Flight of Dr. Ain, was nominated for the Nebula Award. She cultivated a following through fanzines, which she enjoyed because it gave her a way to correspond directly with her readers, such as how celebrities currently use social media. Sheldon crafted a macho persona for Tiptree, saying that she or he had been an African explorer and hinted at being a CIA agent. What's surprising is that her short stories are extremely dystopian, but she remains unknown. Surprising because dystopian stories are very popular right now, which we can all see with the success of The Handmaid's Tale and the fact that Orwell's classic 1984 has had a recent resurgence. Example of one of her no novellas is called Houston, Houston Do You Read? And it's about a crew of male astronauts who travel into outer space and return to find that Earth had a virus that killed everyone except a small number of women who then learned how to live peacefully. And the men, astronauts, are now unwelcome to return to Earth. Very interesting. Alice Sheldon, AKA James Tiptree Jr. Whoa. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so glad that she was smart enough to like figure out her, you know, the way that the world works and doesn't favor women authors and figured a way around it, thank goodness, because well, it sounds like she had some really good works. It definitely, and this is the thing is she <laughs> she had the intuition to do that. She yeah. started out with the male Really, persona, right off the bat. Off the bat. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dang, thank goodness she did, and she stuck with mm -hmm. it. Holy I God. know, and then it was sad, so she uh, took this female persona, because eventually she thought, well, I've had this success, yeah. I'm a good writer, and so I'll do another pseudonym, but female, and I just find it fascinating because she did it because she thought, oh, now I can speak more like a female, I can be myself, I can still write great stuff, and then it was just not even close to a successful. <laughs> so she kind of did an, an experiment. Yeah, right. That failed miserably, uh. sadly. Yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah, yeah, that she after she was established and won these awards and yes, uh, yes. gosh. And now I found out that Nebula is not just a Marvel character or a thing in space, <laughs> right. but also a writing award. Yes. Jeez, yes, I know. I mean, how confusing things. is this? <laughs> exactly. But uh, I actually uh, I haven't heard of her real name or her pseudonym. So I'm, I've got some uh, some reading to do. I, I hadn't either until recently, and I'm really glad I did because yeah. it's super, super interesting. Yeah, it is. I yeah. can't wait to check it out. Yeah. So any information you want that we talk about in this episode, you can find at 10bestest.com slash Alice. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. All right. My first cool sheet, I am going to be talking about a human, and this human is Rob Greenfield. So Rob Greenfield is an adventurer, environmental activist, humanitarian, a, and a dude making a difference. <laughs> he is dedicated to leading the way, uh, leading the way to a more sustainable and just world. Uh, Rob is creator of the food waste fiasco. So more on that next week. Um, Rob has cycled across the U.S. three times on a bamboo bicycle, bringing his message of sustainability and earth friendly living to the United States. Um, and actually, one of our uh, guests, Gar, is just getting back from his second trip 
uh, from the United States um, going across um, each way. So congratulations, Gar. If you're listening, um, his first bike ride across the U.S. is in a book. Is also a book called "Dude Making a Difference." Um, that was in uh, 2016. Uh, he landed in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, with without a penny in his pocket, and he traveled um, on a mission to Panama, 7,000 miles and seven countries away, uh, relying only on the goodness of humanity. So again, he's kind of doing these wild experiments to prove either sustainability or that people are good. So automatically, this guy was uh, my uh, kindred spirit. Uh, after five years of downsizing and simplifying mm -hmm. his life, he uh, he came down to just 111 possessions, which all fit in his backpack. And he traveled for two years in the service of others. He has a YouTube channel that you can check out that I'm really enjoying. Um, some of his sample videos are simple and sustainable living in my 100 square foot tiny house. I mean, that's really tiny. Um, he grew and foraged 100% of his food for an entire year, how he turned his front yard into a garden. Um, and then he is now windled down to 44 possessions because 101 was way too many. <laughs> he has so many different um, things, including how to be sustainable in a city living apartment, uh, composting guides, normalizing breastfeeding, so many different things. Definitely check out Rob Greenfield. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, dude's done that a lot. That is just like, woo, boom. I want to yeah. see his bamboo bike. Yeah, it's so cool. Wow. Yeah. It's super neat. Um, he incredible. wants to, he says something like he wants to be 100% sustainable so that like even when he passes away, like everything that's on him and around him can be composted and you know, back yeah, to earth. Yeah. So I like how he incorporates the numbers, like the 111 and the 44 yeah, and all yeah, of that. Absolutely. I think probably on purpose. It definitely kind of yeah. sticks in your memory. Oh, and but yeah. That thought of being able to carry everything that you own is amazing yeah it's one of those things like it's super inspiring and it definitely i like it because when i watch it it pushes me to do more and i've already i do as much as i can to be sustainable but it's good to have someone out there that's like way extreme and just it's like okay maybe i can do a little bit more i don't want to replicate 44 <laughs> The possessions yeah, myself yeah, right um, that even that's a little bit too much for me um i have 44 things just in the view of the camera right now yeah <laughs> as we're taping this youtube video so i can't quite do that but i admire it and it's something to shoot for and Definitely. just be better i love it and he's just his personality of course is great and he just seems like that's a really awesome. fun fun guy to hang around hang yeah out with, yeah right? cool so, yeah and speaking of fun guys to hang around, thank you for sharing about Gar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, coming back, that is great news. So, yeah, yeah. super cool. I Yay. think at time of recording, he might be back now, or else he's he's real close. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, excellent. Yay. So cool. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, friend. I'm Karen McFarlane Holman. And I'm Brian Hart. Tell us, what's your favorite science fiction story? And comment below, what's your favorite sustainable practice? If you're enjoying the show, please give us a like and share it with a friend. Stay tuned tomorrow for another great show. And don't forget to stay curious.